welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today are Louis D'Souza and Anne-Marie Young. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Oh, and I am breathing a sigh of relief because the gardening season is officially over. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. Oh. Thank you, thank you. So, so Walt, what, 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 what do you do? Do you um, put I the fire on books. and put your feet up and uh, read a book? Or? Likely, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Something along that line. I haven't quite decided <laughs> yet. Sounds cool. <laughs> well, I, I reported on the show last week what happened that uh, I think it was on Tuesday. Um, I was working, got up in the morning, did my usual work, and about 10 o'clock, I ran out of work. And like I, I went to spaz, like no, 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 this is not the way it's supposed to work. I, I, I have to be doing something now. This is I, this is my doing time, and I had to like slow myself down and say, "Oh yeah, we're nearing the end of the season. This is going to happen more often." But it was a bit of a shock because I was so used to just you know going at it, balls to the wall. Here we go, and I didn't have to do it. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have the the challenge of people saying, "Oh, it's Monday again." It's like. Is it? Oh, I never knew. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's something that does get left behind once you, you, you get to that stage of, um, you know, not having to work a nine to five job or, or care about that kind of aspect in your life because of whatever you've sorted out. And, uh, you, you know, it's a lovely feeling, um, not having one day that you dread, but on the other hand, I remember how much I missed. Oh, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> so, so what you start to realize is if the contrast is not there, um, you don't quite, uh, you know, you can miss out in, in some aspects. Oh, I mean, the, the Dowager Countess mm. of Grantham would totally agree with you. She's the one who very famously said, what is a weekend? Because she had no idea. <laughs> There's no such thing as a weekend. We just keep going. <laughs> yeah, I know. Same, same in my life. It just, weekend doesn't exist and Mondays don't exist. And But that means Friday doesn't exist. And that means the contrast doesn't exist, which creates the relief on Friday. You know, mm. so you just don't have that aspect as well, which is something I started to really realize is how much contrast is your teacher. It is. <clears throat> yes. And it is a great reliever. But it's also a relief not to have to have relief. I mean, yeah, if, if that doesn't sound too convoluted, just because, I mean, yes, relief is great. And it's a, the contrast is, is a great teacher, but sometimes I, I just don't want to have to work that hard. Like, you know, why can't I just enjoy? Um, the, the only reason you feel like that is because you are work, you are working 95. So you are having a contrast, which is allowing you to feel that for me, you know, every day. So ask week me in is, March and see how I'm doing. Literally the same, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, once you get your Jaguar, you know you're like starting to look at the um, starting to look at the next next car that you want and all the rest of it. So you need some other contrast to to continue um, with. It's funny it's you mentioned that. Fun. It's funny you mentioned that about cars because uh, we just uh, manifested a, a Lexus for my wife, which oh, uh, she wanted nice. for the longest time. Yeah, and it, it's it's an older one, but it's in mint condition. Absolutely, I mean it's the old. Uh, cliche about having been driven by a, an old lady to church on Sundays. I mean, it had really low mileage. It's just unbelievable. It didn't have a mark on it. Um, but as soon as we had that, I'm instantly thinking about Tesla's and, and the newest electrical vehicle, the, the Lucid, mm, which mm, just got released. Too. Yeah. yeah. That Lucid Air looks really <clears throat> good right now. It's only $168,000. So, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the prices of some of these electric vehicles at the moment. Are just well, you know, they, they just released the, the, the first 20 uh, issues of the model. I mean, it's brand new off the line. Of course, they've got big expenses up front, but that'll come down over time. That's okay. It'll come down to hard 29, then I can afford it. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> it was interesting. Um, we we decided, to, you know, I'm into soil, so I went and see this local lady who's into soil and and she's been in green, um, green peace for forever and all the rest of it, so um, we say, oh, she says, you oh, all come, come visit us at the um, allotment. So, you know, my wife's really into gardening and she's got green fingers and all that. So uh, the three of us and the little one jump into the car and we drive there and she lets us in and she's looking very weird and talking very fast to us. And uh, I was like, 
Oh, I started to realize because my other friend was into Greenpeace and it's like, why would you want such a big car and all the rest of it? And she was, she was annoyed that she had <clears throat> got somebody who was driving this massive Jaguar. You totally <laughs> irresponsible human being. You. <laughs> and then I told her I had an electric scooter and I was running around on that. And, <laughs> and by the time she was finished, she was loving the conversation with us okay, and all great. the rest of it. <laughs> but, but there was this immediate judgment. Mm-hmm. You've got this guzzler. How could you do that? <laughs> You're destroying the planet. Uh, boy. I'll tell you what. I, I mean, this is something I've been actually working on, uh, letting go of my, my own little thing about it because I have a, like an inverse reaction on this stuff. To me, the, the green pieces of the world, the people who have been pushing the, the environmental movement lost me years ago. Mm. They were so heavily emphasizing the negative and, oh my God, the world is about to die and now everything's about to fall apart. It's, of course, it's been falling apart all my lifetime, but. You know, that doesn't seem to dawn on them. But anyway, they just keep going with it. And they just lost me. All they had to do was say, don't you like clean air? Yeah. Because I love clean air. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't have to freak (laughs) out about the planet to like it. (laughs) But no, they had to go negative. So, okay, well, whatever. (laughs) Have fun. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Uh, it's getting quite aggressive in this country as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, demonstrating on motorways and stopping people going about their business. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, you know, I, I mean, I like uh, electric vehicles. I, I really want my next vehicle to be an electric vehicle. I just don't want it for the reasons that they want. I want it. Because oh, oh, she she has an I, electric I, I vehicle. It. it was the funniest thing. She has this electric vehicle. Now she wants to give it back because of the carbon footprint it takes to create an to electric create the electric. vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> there's just no satisfying something. And she was saying there's yeah. just no stopping to this thing. It just goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she was coming to that realization as well. Um, you know, and she was really excited about my electric suit and wanted to come around and have a look at it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I thought there's a carbon footprint to that too. <laughs> there, there, there certainly is, yeah. Oh, you know, dear. until everybody has that the great big wind turbine in the backyard to power up the EV, uh, you're going to have a carbon footprint. That's just all there mm-hmm. is to it, you know. So deal with it and relax. Besides, when you relax, you're going to get more of what you want anyway. So another reason to relax. (laughs) It's interesting. That's what uh, I'm. I'm nearing the end of the uh, the Taya boot camp and the module I'm on. You'll remember the Sam Marie um, module 15 is where you're continuing to just build up uh, on your dream and get really excited and so forth. But you're also seeing if, if there are any transgressors in the way. And one of the ones that David recommends is politics. So here we are, we're talking about the, the political transgressor, right? Uh, and that, that, that transgressor is one that for me was a big one for years, years mm. and years and years. Um, and to the, it's to the point now where I, I just don't really care all that much anymore. I carry a little bit, but nowhere near what I used to. And, and the caring is more along the lines of a smirk than an actual sincere caring. <laughs> so it's pretty small <laughs> at this point, but interesting thing happened. Um, I have a website that I created about, um, what was it, about 14 years ago, political website. It was designed to be a place for people from all political camps to come together and write articles on whatever they wanted to write about. The theory being that if they did that, uh, then maybe they'd build some bridges. In practice, it hasn't worked out like that at all. But nevertheless, that was the original intention. And as I have... Uh, let go of all my stuff or politics is concerned. I've really lost interest in the site. I mean, I've given it no attention the last few years at all. And I was making plans to just, you know, dismantle it entirely in January when the renewal came up. And I, I mentioned it to one of the very few contributors who are still left on. And he made me a deal to uh, basically take over and build up uh, the, the readership and build the uh, income stream and, and so forth. And my initial reaction was, I don't care. <laughs> And I like that reaction. That felt really good to have that reaction. I, I'm ultimately going to let him do it just because he wants to do it. And besides, it's one it takes me one step further away from paying any attention to it at all because now I don't even have to answer the emails. I like that part. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was interesting. The moment that I really, really broke the, the, the connection, so to speak, all of a sudden <laughs> the universe tried to deliver another connection to me. <laughs> <laughs> But that's when you know you've, you've worked through it, isn't it? Right, exactly, yeah. But, Walt, well, you know the, the passion I have for the earth, and I've told you all these stories, and you thought they're, 
you know, they're, they're really fascinating and brilliant and all the rest of it, um, about this different energy sources and the way, what people have done and how they've created it and mm -hmm. how, how you've improved the soil and how that's helped and how, how you can do this and all the rest of it. So what, what is happening now is I'm not focused, as you said, not, you know, this is the first time I think you said something like this is the first time. Um, I can look at this whole green thieves piece thing with some kind of, um, tolerance, I suppose. And <clears throat> well, I'm beyond tolerance. I'm, I'm actually at, at appreciation, which is one of the things we strive for in the tire world is just appreciating it. And I'm, I'm really am appreciating it. I'm like, it. I don't want to have anything to do with it, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the point I'm trying to bring up is really the idea that I'm so focused on what I like about it and what I enjoy about it and what the things that they're going right and the thing not, not focused on what the people are pushing against. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not doing any of that at all. Right. I'm just focused on this is what I like. This is what's fascinating to me. This yes. is where I want to go. This is what I'm enjoying. This is what's great. Yes. And you can do that to politics as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I've been doing to politics. But it's very difficult to do it with anybody else because very few people are there. <laughs> yeah. You have to be really, really careful about who you have that conversation with. Yeah. No doubt about that. Mm. It's a challenge. But once you become so enthused yourself, you'll start being drawn on the internet and other places and other people that are in a similar vibration to you. Oh, it's already happened. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, then you can way. have some amazingly comfortable and positive and progressive conversation. Mm -hmm. Sure. For the first time in my life, I actually feel I can make some kind of a difference to the planet because I'm focused on what I enjoy about like soil and all the rest of it and all, and you know, and I'm enjoying it. So but you, but know, you also it, like the idea of doing that too. That yeah, that's absolutely. Part of the, of the newness of it. But then I, I bumped into this lady who was trying to be helpful and all the rest of it, but she was still, pushing against this. And, oh, I'm, I'm fighting against that. And I'm fighting against this. And she was like, got this list that was endless about what she was protesting against, literally, you know, tying herself to trees and, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, um, I didn't want to have the philosophical conversation with her to break her down to of everything she was doing wrong. And, and start building her up because A, I'd know I didn't have the time. B, I just wanted to get what she could share with me positively about soil and all the rest of it mm -hmm. um, and, and grow from all of that. And, uh, you know, my wife was big into gardening and they, they hit it off and they were talking about all the things they were growing and what they were doing with them and the jams and the this and the, the purees and the um, <laughs> jellies and all the other things that they were making. And, uh, you know, we had we had a great time, and I think there was this great mutual respect by the time we left. But, you know, um, there's a time and a place, and I knew this wasn't the time and the place to to take her and break her down and 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 and, and point out another viewpoint. And so, certain people, you get to that field, you get that kind of intuition. Yeah, I can do it with this person. Nope, leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's an irony about the word protest. I don't know if you're aware of it. Uh, do you know anything about the etymology, the, the origins of the word protest? Well, I mean, if you break it down to simplicity, it's pushing against what you don't want, and we know that that doesn't work. So, but, but actually, be... that's not that's not actually what the etymology is, though. That's what's so interesting. Oh, okay. The, the original etymology is uh, to pro means for to, to speak for, oh, and, okay. and kest uh, basically refers to speak speaking forth publicly as in testament, to give testament, or to witness. So it's to witness for. Mm. And if you think about how we're using the word today, protest, compared to what the etymology is, it's almost exactly the diametric opposite. Absolutely. Actually. Whoever created it was very careful to use the words that were moving towards something. Right. And humanity in its negativity has taken that same word and and change the vibration of it completely to the degree Abram would say, make a new word, you know, find something especially, that doesn't have that negative vibration and let's work with it. Especially when we, when we notice the, the meaning witness to witnesses, to observe and, and almost be a part of it in your observation. And you think about what the, what the Greenspeace protesters are observing. They're observing the end of the earth. How appropriate from a law of attraction perspective. Yeah, that for them is what protesting is. It is witnessing the end times <laughs> and pushing against it, yeah. and pushing against it at the same time. <laughs> mm. 
which is quite a feat when you think about it. <laughs> and then you wonder, from a law of attraction point of view, are they some of the biggest people responsible for the for the annihilation? Oh, of course. Yeah. I've been saying that for years here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but the irony is a little harsh for them. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I did try it once or twice, and no, it didn't fly. <laughs> it didn't work at all. <laughs> they weren't ready to hear that. But, you know, hey, they're going to be ready when they're ready, and until then, they won't be. You know, for many years, work. even as a, as a youngster world, um, I could never protest against anything or join any group that was pushing against something. And mm -hmm. I didn't understand why. I was completely clueless um, until, you know, Abram Hicks came out with focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Mm. Um, if you want to get anywhere, then it just everything clicked. Like, my gosh, instinctively and intuitively when I was younger, I was not going to go with these groups. And I did not know why. There was no, there's none of that clarity there. And it was so nice to get that clarity from them. And the way the, 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 the ease and the simplicity with which they put it was just mind blowing. I can, um, blow your mind a little bit further if you're interested, because it's also fun to look at the word demonstration, mm -hmm. which is much more straightforward. That one, I think you can pretty much imagine what the roots, the etymology of that is. But to demonstrate is to point out. Demo. Stration. Okay. Yep. Point out. To yeah. point out. It's Latin. And again, it shows how much there has been a distortion over the years because de what demonstration has turned into is pushing against and arguing sometimes to the point of a riot and, and, you know, waving signs and rah, 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 getting angry and all that kind of stuff when it's really just pointing out. <laughs> hmm. Imagine if they actually limited it to pointing out, Hey, I just wanted to point something out. Okay. I'm done. Bye. <laughs> be a different experience entirely. I'm not expecting that to happen. I'm just saying it'd be interesting. <laughs> Well, it'd be fascinating. You know, I've often thought of we should have an LOA police. I know it's contradictory <laughs> in terms. <laughs> but you should go into all businesses and all the rest of it and all politics and you say, oh, no, no more than 14 seconds. No more than 14 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Time out. Time out. Okay, we've had it now. Let's focus on what we want. Let's go. <laughs> you are under a law of attraction arrest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I reckon somebody's going to do that, and uh, and they're going to make a fortune out of it. Trust me. Probably yes. Um, oh, that's funny. You know, go through all the the emails that are sending out, etc., and making sure that they're not focusing too much on what they don't want. You know, like they don't like people using their mobile phones at work. Instead of going on and on and on about all the negativity of mobile phones, all the positivity of having more time to communicate with each other. You right. Know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's very simplistic, small things, but if you add them all up, you're going to get a company that's going to be absolutely flying. And it doesn't even have to be a company. No. Company, business, organization, doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it could just be, you know, people that you hang out with. I mean, it, it doesn't even have to have any organization to it at all. Mm. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to be into, I mean, you can't, there's nothing wrong with the organization. Don't get me wrong. It's just that you don't have to, but to me, there's a little bit of a limitation of belief that goes on there. And it's not, it's just not there. You don't have to. Mm. <laughs> we lost Anne Marie. Where'd she go? Oh my God. The world is ending. We should protest again. It. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's fight against StreamYard for the. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, may maybe it's telling us world something. We should let her speak a bit more. Huh? Well, it's an interesting <laughs> dilemma. No, I, you're, you're raising a very interesting yeah. point. It, it, it's an interesting dilemma because she will sometimes speak up, but I can tell a lot of the time she's just enjoying sitting back and listening and watching Absolutely. the conversation. You know, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I don't oh, know. Well observed. Yes, I see that too. And of course, there's, a, there's the other question too. If it's a law of attraction thing, who attracted it, us or her? Or, or, or. You, there's many forces involved. Many forces. We, we often think it's us or them, but there's universal forces. There's, um, you could say political. You could say there's service provider. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You You're could saying say there's a political side to her being knocked off of the show here? Absolutely. Oh my God. 
Well, they, don't forget, there's a we, lot of people listening really to the show. Knock, Some of them the live, a lot of them live, and they've all we're, got opinions. We're actually going to get <laughs> have a knock on the door from the LOA police because she got knocked off the air because it was politically incorrect. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, we could have a lot of fun with all this, but it's uh, yeah. I hope she comes back. But there's a few questions I wanted to ask her. Um, well, well, you're making an, an interesting point though when you talk about how there there are many forces going on. The way I like to think about it is we, we, we often talk about how there is this law of attraction and we're responsible for what we're attracting into our lives and how we're focusing our attention and how we respond to what comes into our lives and so on and so forth. Um, but that's actually a rather simplistic view Very. of how things are actually, mm-hmm. because we kind of live in this gigantic vibrational soup. Mm-hmm. where there are all kinds of vibrations kind of bouncing all over the place, you know, interacting with each other, bouncing off of each other, sometimes trying to crush each other. I mean, just like, just imagine, you know, sound waves just pounding in from a thousand different directions all at once. You get this cacophony of sound, right? Mm. Well, that's kind of what we have with, you know, vibration in in the universe, particularly when you have a very dense population of people or any other kind of energetic forms all in one area, just the, the the energetic waves going on are kind of staggering in, in all the directions that they go in. So it's useful from the point of view of trying to understand our own behaviors and our own uh, experiences and so forth to understand the abstract model. But really, we have to understand it in the context of the way it actually works. Yes, what we're describing is true, but they don't happen in a vacuum. They happen mm-hmm. in interaction with everything else. And that raises a really interesting, well, a lot of interesting questions, but one particular interesting question, which is, why did we choose to come into a place where there's so much craziness going on while we're trying to do our manifesting? There she is. <laughs> She's back! Hooray! <laughs> she just doesn't hear us yet. That's all right. We'll give her a moment to connect in. But, but why, why do you think we do that? I, I think it's actually a very good thing, but why do you think we deliberately come into this place with this life and this and explore living with all of this crazy stuff that happens. Well, Walter, I think I'd get bored by, bored with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can only be so interesting to myself unless I've got something to bounce my thoughts off and, and to communicate with. I think, you know, if I didn't have all these different vibrations and different people and different com- concerns, you know, uh, ideas and thoughts and beliefs. Um, I, I think I'd be, I would not want to come here. First of all, I wouldn't come here. <laughs> I would not be here. <laughs> Louis would check let, out. Let me find somewhere where there's some soup. <laughs> yes, I mean, get some soup. <laughs> I love soup. Yep. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people, especially younger kids who are starting to realize that they hate being social. And there's now a label for it and all many labels, psychological labels. And then now, now that they've got the labels, I start feeling more comfortable that and justified in not communicating or interacting with the rest of the world. Um, and you know, they, they try to run away from the soup. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's and true. you know, you came here for the soup. <laughs> well, let's be honest though. There's a difference between wanting to come here and actually getting here. I believe I, I, because I, I believe that source energy beings that are just living in the quote non-physical, although um, the stream of David had pointed out that even that is physical, but for the sake of delineation and making things clear, those who are not part of a, of, of a lifetime right now, so to speak, um, those beings want in many cases to come into this life. Well, why, why not just in, enjoy it from the where they are? Well, I think it's because it's much more intense when you're actually in the soup when you're part of this, uh, this, this lifetime thing that we're a part of right now. So th- that's my view on it. Amory, can you hear us now? Are you connected? Yes. I can hear you. Sorry about that. <laughs> my phone overheated and threw me out completely. So it's just find another device. Well, I'm glad you found another device. That's a good thing. Now you have to settle something for us because we were wondering I... if this was, if you getting knocked off was sort of metaphorical for us, not letting you talk enough. <laughs> <laughs> I love listening to you two talk, though. It's amazing. It's just, I can pass. It's like watching, like, badminton going back and forth. It's, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I just stormed off in a complete strop because I couldn't get a word in Edgeways, and I'm not used That's to that in my life. That's right. There now, now <laughs> the truth I comes never, out. Oh, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Oh, <laughs> I was crying two seconds ago. Well, honestly. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm crying again. <laughs> I, I we'll we'll wait for you to get over that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, of course, yeah. that be part of the conversation. Louis, you said you had some uh, something that you wanted to ask her about, but that was in the earlier part of the Yeah, yeah, it was about books. I was just wondering if you if oh, okay. you got hold of, say, um, The Prophet or any of the other books that I, we were talking about. I did. I I got The Prophet. I've not cited anything yet. Um, oh, okay. And I, I downloaded the other one. Um, oh, right, okay. So, what I illusions? No, what was the other one? By Elizabeth Heist? Yeah, Illusions by Elizabeth yeah. Heist. Yeah, no oh. illusion. Oh, no, no, not <laughs> illusion, no, sorry. No, 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 no. Initiation, initiation, sorry. That's it, yeah. <laughs> illusions. So, yeah, <laughs> now I've got but I... <laughs> Richard put, Bach is put, like, no, 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 that's not it. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, the prophet I actually um, put in a safe place and... Got where that safe place was. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you bought the book physically, did you? <laughs> yes, I did. I like I like a physical book. Yeah, I really it, do. Yeah, it, it's a tiny little one. It's very small. It's very much like illusions. Yeah. Is why I like relating to it from the size and the ease and the simplicity of it all. Um, yeah. With bigger text, so I've, don't just in case glasses. nobody's <laughs> ever heard of the book, it's such probably sell millions and millions and millions of copies. Very much like illusions, but. Um, I think he was um, Persian uh, in the old days, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you you often ask these people from Iraq or Iran or wherever it is, um, where where do you come from, Persia? <laughs> people have got much better um, image of Persia in their mind than Iraq or Iran. <laughs> I can't remember which one of the two it is. Can't, can't say blame. Somebody will correct. No, I can't either because Prince of Persia is a great game, and I love mm-hmm. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think um, of Persia, you think of like you know the Arabian Nights. You think about yeah, exactly. You know, so yes. There's like a whole curved romance, swords but, and yeah. uh, you, you know Aladdin nice and, uh, and 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 uh, Alibaba and the Forty Thieves. Uh, yeah, right. you've got you've got a good um, picture going on there, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, instead of oil and America and war and <laughs> yeah, okay, not really impressed. <laughs> um, so you know, he he, um, I think the Prophet is one of the only books that he wrote in English. All the others were translated, mm-hmm. or at least most of them. Um, but he was he was really a poet, and he had a, a deep love, absolute incredible love for life and humanity and woman mm-hmm. and other things. Um, and uh, the 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 story in, in the Prophet is really about a a, a wise man <clears throat> that had gone to a cave. He had achieved enlightenment, and on his way to his death or his burial ground, I think he like wanted to go home. Uh, he went through a town and in the town, everybody knew he was old wise man and was living on the hill. And they said to him, teach us, teach us some of your wisdom. And, uh, and then, um, they say to him, talk to us about clothes. And he would say, blah, 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 blah. And he would say, talk to us about children. And, uh, he would say, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. <laughs> seek to be like your children, but do not seek to make them like you. Your children live in the house of tomorrow where you cannot even visit in your dreams. Send your children forth upon the path um, like a bow uh, and send your children um, forth as arrows upon the path. You are the bows that will send them forth and things like that. And it's just beautiful. It's absolutely stunningly done. And a a lot of people... Uh, use the wedding one at, at a wedding. Mm-hmm. And my sister used the, the part in there on weddings, uh, or relationships. I can't remember which one. Um, mm-hmm. and it's beautiful. It's, you know, he's really got such a grasp. And you, if you have a look at almost everything he's talking about there, he's talking about contrast. Mm. He's incredibly good 
flowing and, and pro- projecting and portraying contrast. So uh, I highly recommend. The book is called The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. I know a lot of people would have known about it. I'm, I'm kind of wondering about something because Gibran, I was looking him up. He, he died in 1931, so it's been quite a few years. And I'm wondering what he would make about the contrast today in what we're calling Persia. Because the contrast today is... Wow, yeah, completely different. It, but well, I'm not sure still, that it's different. Still it, warring, still warring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's very pronounced, I think. And I'm, I'm just curious what he would think about that. I don't yeah. know what his response would be. But. So, somebody pointed out something, and I think I've mentioned before in a program, but um, it's again to do with contrast. And he was saying when he went to Israel, everybody was saying shalom, shalom, I think it is shalom, um, which means peace, if I'm right or wrong, I think so. Well, it means uh, a number of things, yes, but peace is one of them. And um, they were saying, like, this is the most important thing, is peace. And he said, why? Why do you think peace is the most important thing? It's not the most important thing to me from where I come from. You know, many other things are more important than peace. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, then then he started looking at it and he said, well, you know, if you lived in a country that was fighting and had war and all the time for centuries and years and years and years and it never, ever really stopped, then peace would be one of the things you would be looking at as at the top of your list of what you would want to achieve. And it was very interesting that I was looking at, my life and the life of, say, the UK people, the life of South Africans, as to what they would put at the top of of, of what they would strive for. And uh, it, it definitely differed, and it's also differed at different times in my life of what I put at the top of that. <clears throat> I, I hadn't read it in a while, so I went to look it up. This is one of the things that Wikipedia is actually helpful with um, because they give you quite the, the history on it. But shalom means a number of things. It does mean peace, but it also means harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility, and idiomatically, it also means hello and goodbye. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One size fits all. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some I, of those I, I are... presume that Gilbran knew which of those meetings he was addressing with them when he was talking to him. I hope he did, because otherwise it was a one confused conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, this doesn't come from Khalil Gibran. This comes from another wise dude. Um, oh, okay. But, you know, it, it's just a concept. Um, I've started to really realize what contrast means in my life. So, you know, somebody who's really um, green peace and fighting for and all the rest of it, it's very, very, very important for them, that contrast. For me, it's the true. idea of, of all of that would just be, oh, come on, grow up. You know, can't you see, <laughs> can't, can't you see that you're focusing on what you don't want? You know, and I'd go through all this, but to them, it is so important at certain stages of my life. It was very important to be a Catholic. Mm-hmm. It was very important. I even started the Catholic society of the university, you know. Oh, wow. <clears throat> um, and I was trying to find my, 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 my truth within my religion. Mm hmm. Which is, you know, and of course, if it fails, then you go elsewhere, which is what it did for me. Sure. Um, and, you know, I went into reborn Christianity after that. And that oh, you did? Very, I did very quickly. Reborn. Yeah, oh, no, okay. no, well, it was a very short period of time. <laughs> it was a short period. Very short period of time. <laughs> like a month. It was about a month. <laughs> I went to a happy, happy church. <laughs> it wasn't even nine months. Wow. <laughs> um, and... Uh, but I, I saw the the beauty and the power of it because there's a lot of emotion and, and all the rest of it, and they get swept up with all this, and it's great, you know. There's there's a lot of feeling and expressing oh, yeah. and, and and all the rest of it there. So you know oh, that was another very important and um, yeah, I can talk about that for a while actually. <laughs> I haven't talked about that before on the show, um, and then. One of the places that you can go to in the in the United States that really um, epitomizes what you're describing is what they often call Black Baptist, uh, because or or gospel, because mm-hmm. you, you walk into one of those services and I mean it's just look, the air is alive, yeah. the electricity mm-hmm. is just palpable, and the energy is just flowing, and 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 they they really do make that a major part of everything that they do within their religion. It's, it's mm. a huge, it plays a huge, huge role. It's quite a thing. 
I mean, it's not really for me, but I can see why it would be very good for a lot of people. This when reminds Tex- me. Sorry, oh, carry on. I'm so, uh, I know I was just going to say when I was in Texas, we visited like a gospel church and the energy in the room, it was exciting, but draining. There was wailing. Yes. There was good way to dark. describe it. It was just, yes. it was Well, that, that, Actually, and that's a little bit different from the, uh, the, the, the Black Baptist, but they're similar, but different, uh, but yes. But Walter reminds me of a great conversation I had with uh, Iona, and uh, um, we were talking about. I think you're talking about Iona, my sister-in-law. Sorry, Iona, not Iona. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, do I I own a house or you own a house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you own it. Sorry, you own it. Hey, um, it's okay. Hey, the, the name didn't even exist until she was born. So you know, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just remember the way I was trying to remember it because she, she said to us, just say, you own a house. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 that's how I remember it. Um, it was a good mnemonic anyway. So so we were talking about, um, you know, what what the, um, the, the, the those kind of churches really – see you know they feel the energy they see it and all the rest of it and then we're sitting here discussing the difference between they said this in the bible and they said that in the bible and it's like you're missing the point completely you're not (laughs) feeling what's going on Mm -hmm. and i can understand that aspect of that church so strongly yeah very very strongly because it's often happened in my life i'm very much about cutting away all the the intellect and the crap and all the rest of it, and just getting down and feeling and living it and being it, you know, it's like get rid of it. So I had a lot of uh, appreciation for <laughs> for the reborn Christian life and the real emotional aspect and getting in tune with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and all the things that they were doing was it was incredible. Um, I'll but, tell you, honestly, I've often wondered if I had been born to parents who were already into that. So I'd been basically raised in that kind of a, of a religious background. I wonder if I would have had a similar reaction to Christianity as I had going through the Presbyterian church, which was basically flat, boring, and dull <laughs> by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. But because I feel you're quite an intellectual, I think you would have you would have nailed it on the head probably um, pretty quickly as well. I don't think it would have probably. made too much difference. I, I'll bet, I'll bet you that it would have taken me longer though. Cause I could see myself getting swept up in that emotion. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, there, there was the intellectual co- conflict you have with that because it says in the Bible that if you speak in tongues, you shouldn't speak in tongues unless somebody's not translating it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there was nobody translating. These guys are all speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, th- there were a lot of things that started to really confuse me when you started to look at it intellectually, but then again, they were all getting swept up and excited and, and all the rest of it. And, um, I went to a Christian camp with them, uh, mm-hmm. on the beach and they had this <clears throat> in- intellectual discussion. They were saying, okay, you're pro God, this group. And on the other side, you're pro devil. Let's have a discussion. And it was fascinating. You know, they really, they really got to the core of all of it, and and, and the guys were really getting into being pro devil. <laughs> of course, <laughs> it's a bunch of teenagers and like to play the bad guys. I mean, there's a reason for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, there were a lot of good things about it, lots and lots. Um, but again, you know, I still felt that they were missing core aspects um, because you know my big thing is clarity. So I was like. Mm. There's not, there's not a lot of clarity in this. There's a lot of emotion. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, of course, many people and many, many things along the way and many dis- discoveries I made along the way started putting all the pieces and all the puzzle together. And then you started seeing that none of them are wrong mm-hmm. and all of them are focusing on different aspects of different things. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, which, which one do I want to focus on? Where do I want to go? Yeah. And of course, that's the biggie for me. I want to encourage people to find their own way through it all. And, if it's if it means getting being part of any of these groups, go for it. You know. Yeah, I think the main thing with any of these explorations is explore for the sake of exploring because it's fun, because you're enjoying it, because you're getting something out of it, and don't surrender yourself to the group. 
And as mm. long as you do those two things, you're going to have a great experience. I don't care whether you decide to stay or decide to leave. You're going to have a great experience. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember going to church and feeling, I, I, I believed in something. I wasn't sure back then what it was. I believed mm-hmm. there was something I didn't know if it was God or what it was. Mm-hmm. And then sitting in church and being told how you're a sinner, you're this, you're that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't think this is, I remember feeling quite angry. I don't think this is what I believe. Mm-hmm. Really mm-hmm. struggled with that. Yeah, you're still trying to find your voice too when you're brought up because you're, you're young. You, I mean, you haven't been part of this, this world very long and you haven't learned all the ins and outs of all the different ways that people mess their own heads up. So until you learn that, it takes a while to figure out what the heck is going on. It can be confusing. But Amory, what you were picking up on is the truth that we have come to learn from Abram Hicks is that emotional, the emotions are your guidance. Mm -hmm. If it feels good, you're heading in the right direction. If it feels bad, you're heading in the wrong direction. And intuitively and instinctively, we know that we understand it. And that starts grating into our soul. And it's like, nah, something's wrong here. Something's Mm -hmm. wrong. This doesn't quite feel right. Um, and as they start laying on thick, this, you know, hell and damnation and you're a sinner and you repent, et cetera, et cetera. Then you, you, your emotions are saying, Oh, this is bullshit. This is not how it doesn't make me feel good. I want to run away. I want to run away. Yeah. Let me go. Let me go think or do be somewhere else. And, uh, you know, of course, many people have left the Catholic church for that precise reason. And a whole bunch uh, of other or, churches. Or, 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 yeah. Or, yeah. I was already trying. I want to mean, mean Christianity as a whole, but um, well, Catholics any religion. have led the way. I, let, I think we should give them some credit for that. But yes, <laughs> um, Catholics. I had the probably after looking at all the different Christian religion. A lot of them, not a lot of them. There's so many you could never even look at all of them. Oh God! Even no, if you spend an entire life. <laughs> um, some of the towns but, here in the U.S. You could go through the entire town and still not find them all. I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> but. The, what was I trying to point out? So you've got so many of them and they're all so diverse that, um, it becomes confusing. It's like, what is Christianity when they're all pitching against each other? You, you know, this, uh, but what I liked about the Catholics as opposed to anybody else, is there was nothing wrong. I could look at anything that being brought up as a Catholic. They were so sure of their belief, my mm-hmm. parents. Yep. That I could look at anything, but as soon as I left the religion, mm. then all the, all the, all the horns and everything started coming out. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Where are you going? What are you looking at? Let me have a look at it and, 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 um, all the rest of it. And that, that was the, so they, they're so confident that they will give you the space to do it all. But once you leave, then there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, you also mentioned the idea that, that they hammer you with, all of the, the would have, should have, you know, you're a sinner and all that kind of thing. And I have to acknowledge and admit that word sinner kind of got under my craw and stayed there for years. Even after I left the church, I, I, there, there was a piece of me that just resented it. And I, when I finally found out what the root of that was, it came out of left field. It came from a place I didn't even expect at all. It came from here on the show, actually. When Sidney Chavez and I were doing the Neville Goddard series of books, Neville points out that the origin of the word sinner is to miss the mark. Which is not at all what I was taught when I was in church. Let me tell you, it wasn't even <laughs> close to what I was taught. And then I looked but, it up, and sure enough, it's exactly what the etymology was. And I said, well, shoot, no wonder they had it all screwed up. They didn't even know what the dang word meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, 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 they had the mark. They hit the mark. They were saying you were missing the mark because you were sinning. But what, what they weren't doing is they were saying you should be more accurate. You should be more accurate. <laughs> True, yeah. But, but what they were really doing is that they were applying um, a shame-based morality to it. That's what yeah. they were really trying to put apart. And that had nothing to do with the origin of the word. Mm. So mm-hmm. it's, it's part of that control game, that mind game. But it's fascinating how... M- that is all resurfacing now with COVID, vaccine, passport. It's mm. the same game that has been going on since time immemorial, <laughs> the shame-blame game, and it's so it Sounds like something yucky. Carter Brothers should make, the shame-blame game. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's happening because more and more people are coming over and – Come into sort of more of the law of attraction 
And so that is why there's this contrast. There's more people more angry fighting against because there's more people coming this side. I think it's more that, that people who were already uh, resisting it found law of attraction and coalesced there. But I think mm. it was happening before they even thought it. I know I'll speak for myself. That's what happened with me. I was yes. moving away from that long before I discovered what law of attraction was. Literally decades. Mm. Yeah. You know, when law of attraction came along and, <clears> and the, <throat> the, the philosophy, you know, the spirituality that goes along with it, it was a, a really remarkable experience of yes, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And that too. <laughs> yes. And yes. And yes. I'm like, oh, wow. I've been waiting for this all my life. But it's not like I had to wait for it to find out that I really didn't agree with the other stuff. I disagree with it yeah. long before. <laughs> yeah. So if you break it down, Anne Marie, the law of attraction is a belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a religion, a Christianity is a belief. Islam a belief, is a belief. Yeah. So uh, a belief is just thought you think often. But the great advantage for Walt and I and a lot of people who are in, uh, into LOA is very simply this. It's not, um, nobody's telling you you're going to go to hell. Um, <laughs> nobody's, no, nobody's hitting you on the back. Nobody's calling it a religion. Um, they're saying it's a universal law, which makes you feel much better than God says you must do this or God says <laughs> you must do that. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, it's, it's easier to take the pull and, and start understanding it and move forward. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, the way to describe and, it. And, and a lot of people don't really get that. Yeah. It's just kind of another religion. It's another thought that you think often. It's just another mm -hmm. belief. Um, but it is a belief that has less whip in it and it has more focus on what you want and less focus on what you don't want. And that's a basic principle of the law of attraction. You know, law of attraction 101 is focus more on what you want and less on what you don't want. And we've said it probably 10 million times on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but it, 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 it's also, um, with the clarity that comes with it, the step five is, is the importance of, the importance of negativity. And that doesn't, you know, it's good that you're a sinner because sinning helps you expand and, 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 become, you know, and they just don't go down that route of telling you how important it is to, to go through that experience. Can you imagine if you actually, if you walked into any <laughs> Christian church of any kind around the world and said those words, can you imagine the looks on the faces of the people in that building? Like, oh, uh, I had a lot of, <laughs> I had a lot of fun walking, walking down the hill, um, off the school and there was this, one of his parents got next to me. And, you know, you're saying, oh, you always look happy and, you know, bouncy on the way back. And, but, you know, the world's going to hell and, you know, this problem and that problem. And I was like, <clears throat> I just said to him, how do you get rid of Satan? He's like, what? I said, what's the one thing Satan can't handle? What, what can't he deal with? Uh, I don't know. He was like totally confused. Well, what are you coming from? I said, there's only one thing Satan can't handle and that's love. So learn to love Satan. <laughs> she was like, totally flawed. <laughs> Said, when, when you're in that, 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 that vicinity of love, there can't be negativity. So go out there and focus on what you want and, and focus on love and all the rest. Of it. And you're like, you got it. He was like, yeah, 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 I get it. I understand. <laughs> and, uh, I never saw him again, but. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, you, you never know what you say can, can really help change a person's life. And, um, well, sure. It isn't even and, necessarily what you say. It's who you are. It's what you do. It's how you believe. It just comes yeah, across. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, and it's just really nice to, to be able to share that more of a clarity on the focus on what you want, just to share that and getting out there and just doing these things. I mean, there were so many instances where, my wife and I are driving and there's just suddenly a parking lot in front of us or the rain suddenly stops as we, as we park or we just managed to finish our lunch before the rain starts again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, we both look at each other and say, LOA. Yeah, LOA. <laughs> yeah. Focusing on what we want, focusing on what you want. <laughs> we, we were telling a story about how we get 
uh, you know, day out kind of a thing where the weather adapts itself so that we can have exactly what we want. And mm-hmm. the one, the, the story that Louise always goes to is one of my favorites as well. When we were living in Virginia, uh, we were living about an hour outside, well, depending on the traffic, if traffic was bad, two hours outside of DC, um, but theoretically an hour outside. And at one point we went into Alexandria, which is to the south of the city. It's, it's kind of borders on, on the city itself. Um, very old town, very, um, colonial in, in that sense. Um, and we decided to go on a day where the forecast was for rain and thunderstorms. It was a Saturday. We needed the day off. We needed to have the relaxation. We needed to just go there and walk down the street and have an ice cream and see the shops and go down to the harbor and all that kind of stuff. And we needed it to be a clear day. And so we said, well, we've been experimenting with this law of attraction stuff. Let's see if we can apply our skills. So we did. And it was an amazing trip because, um, when you drive in on the highway, as you're, as you're coming in from where we were, we live to the west of DC. So we're driving on, on, um, route, uh, 66, I think it was interstate, interstate 66, which goes into the city and, it, it first comes to the famous beltway that goes around the, um, DC, which is a very, very large and long highway that goes all the way around the city. Um, and then you get on the del- beltway and you head south and you're, you're going around, you're, you're, first you're heading south and then you're kind of bending around toward the east as you're getting toward the bottom of it. And that's where Alexandria is. And just as we're coming to the exit for Alexandria, there's this little tiny hole in the sky. <laughs> All the clouds have moved away from one, this one little hole, and it's right over downtown area of Alexandria. We pull into Alexandria. The hole opens up just enough. Sunlight, beautiful day. People are out in the street. We spent the afternoon, had a great day. Decided we were done, went back to the car. The hole filled in and started raining again, and we drove home. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I mean, it is just it's so cool every time that happens, and that kind of thing happens a lot. It's just really, we, really we, we were driving back. Uh, my brother came with us, and he had his car, and we had ours. And uh, we were kind of going through Wales together and stopping and, you know, and just just taking the slow route, as we'd say. And uh, the last uh, place that we, we were going to stop was um, a farmhouse. And I was looking on Google, uh, and it was saying it was going to be closed when we got there. So I phoned him up in the car. He's driving in front of me. And I said, hey, it looks like this place is going to be closed when we get there. And we look at it, and we, we both said, well, let's just see what happens. Sure. Something something will work out. We arrived there, and there's a few other shops, and there was this, like, little coffee shop perfectly right there. And it was uh, we just had, like, 20 minutes to sit down, have a have a drink and a bit of cake, and, and, and say our goodbyes. And then we got in our cars again. We went home <laughs> different directions. But it was... It was just like the timing, and mm-hmm. just before we got out, got out of the car and got in there, it wasn't raining. And when we got out of there, um, you know, while we were in there, it was pouring. <laughs> Get out! It stops raining. We got right. in the car, and it's just like, oh my gosh, this is just unbelievable. I, I love how polite the weather is. Mm. That because that's what I consider that to be. It's being polite to those of us who understand how this stuff works. So just doffing my cap to you. You know, have a nice mm-hmm. rain free day and I'll get the rain going after you're gone, but you know, enjoy your next <laughs> ten minutes. That's great. <laughs> but it also also sometimes didn't work like that. So I'm walking out um and uh it absolutely pours. Absolutely pours, we're absolutely drenched from top to bottom. And but the weather's warm. Mm. You know, and it actually feels nice. Feels good. <laughs> and you, 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 you're feeling this wind and this rain, and you're just feeling alive, and you're leaning against it, and it's warm, and it's like this couldn't be better. You know, <laughs> it just <laughs> makes me feel so alive. <laughs> Hi, JB. <laughs> um, that, that, well, that's actually a, a challenging concept because it seems like well, you didn't get what you wanted, but you actually did. You got exactly. You actually what you did, wanted. yes, but you. Yeah. You start looking at what you want in a very different light, um, yes. and 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 you become very flexible to how things turn out. You know? mm-hmm. um, and then we got that beautiful picture which I sent you guys of, of that. Oh um, yeah, 
um, on the beach and, right. you know, the rainbows and all the rest of it. There yeah. were hundreds, must have seen hundreds of rainbows. <laughs> wow. And, and, you know, double, double rainbows, monkeys wedding, as we call them in South Africa, uh, when there's two rainbows. Um, mm-hmm. just, and then, and the clarity of them was just stunning. You know, I've never seen a rainbow that clear before in my life. I don't think. Nice. Um, just beautiful. Really, really nice. It's wonderful when life and the universe and the world around us reveal itself to us in ways mm. that we didn't expect, giving us new opportunities to appreciate and love and enjoy things that we may not have originally had in mind, but boy, there it is. All we have to do is just be aware of it. And it was great going to the beach, taking off your shoes and then walking in the sand and the water and realizing, you know, even at this time of the year, that it's not cold. It's warm enough to walk. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we had all these streams we had to cross and all the rest of it. And we just walked for hours. But it, it was warm enough, comfortable enough um, just to take off your socks and shoes, link to that 4.7 hertz of the earth and just <laughs> tune in, man. It was just great. I loved it. <laughs> I've often thought it was, it, it's really an interesting thing about the UK and uh, England in particular that, well, in this case, Wales, that you guys live, you, you basically benefit from the weather pattern of the Mediterranean. And that's really important because if we look at a similar latitude uh, here in the, the US, it, it would be like, you know, Nova Scotia, which is freezing cold mm. this time of year. But that's just because we don't have the Mediterranean system coming up. That Mediterranean system is what makes that water warm this time of year. I mean, that, that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, I mean, those currents that are flowing around the world, um, changing the weather everywhere, um, mm-hmm. which they say will be a big problem if they ever stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can believe that. <laughs> you know, those, those currents, they say, for the climate change is a possibility that they can stop. But, of course, that's just fear-mongering, um, normal mm-hmm. stuff. But they are so important and they have such an effect. Like in South Africa, right at the bottom, you've got the cold Banguela cu- current coming up the west coast and the east coast you've got the the warm mozambique coming down so you've got the the coasts where you want to swim and coasts where you don't want to go anywhere and swim. <laughs> um and you know you start realizing that these are just big currents of water that are going going past and, and they have such a huge effect on the weather and mm. and the temperature of the water and everything else you know quite interesting I have this little thing going on in my head right now. Wouldn't it be cool if there were some real hardcore um, left-wing, you know, anti-climate change kind of people tuning in and deciding, you know, I'm, I'm going to start appreciating some of the stuff that I haven't been appreciating before. I, I just kind of, I like to think about that and imagine. I, I think, I think, <clears throat> I think you would find that all of them say that they are appreciating um, aspects of it and to say that they aren't is uh, ridiculous, which is, there's probably definitely some truth in it. It's just the I amount, it's yeah. the degree to which you're doing it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and, mm. and to me, what I'm saying is the moment that they're doing it here by being influenced what's here on the show, they've just increased it compared to what they were mm. doing before. Mm. Cause I mean, we never, no, none of us ever get it right all the time. Nobody does. You know, we all have our little quirks, shall we say. Never. But, but never. I mean, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> Well, everybody but Louie. Poor Louie. <laughs> he looks such I'm a sheltered Perfect. <laughs> well, Louie left Satan, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I can go along with him on that one. <laughs> Especially when you explain it the way he did. It was a good explanation. Yeah, it was. But this has been a fun conversation. We did pretty well considering we didn't have a topic. And look how we just kind of explored all kinds of stuff. We're doing more of what I like doing and what I've been wanting to do. And that is really getting beyond law of attraction and talking about life. So thank you, guys. I appreciate that very much. You make, thank you, Walt. You make it, you make it <laughs> so much more fun. And, and I'm just enjoying the fact that we're expanding this way. This is, this is the kind of expanding I've been wanting to do for a long time. So thank you. Um, trying to think if there's any events coming up. I guess the uh, next uh, event coming up is a, is a visitor coming on Friday. Um, it's a friend of uh, Debbie G's. And, uh, no, I'm sorry. This one is actually a friend of Cassie Parks, I believe, who was on the show a few, few weeks back. Um, one of her students who has now become a coach. And apparently there's a new book coming out. So something to look forward to. Anyway, thank you guys very much. Thank you, podcast listeners everywhere. And we will see you all next time here on LOA Today.
Goodbye. Take care, everyone.